The Spirit of the Lord is here. God is here. He is active in creation. The power of the Lord is here. God is here to minister to his people. So whenever two or three are gathered, then he is here with us. And if he is here, then there will be a change. If God is here, then there will be breakthrough. If God is here, then there will be healing. If God is here, then there will be power. If God is here, then there will be healing. Sickness cannot stay here anymore. As we're about to hear the word, they cannot stay. Nobody can, nobody can, will live here bound. You'll be delivered as the word is coming. Not me, but God. God will just work because he's a spirit. God is a spirit and he will work and he will work and he will work. And he will bring deliverance and he will do what he needs to do. But God is here. And he is here today. Hallelujah. Let me go into the word. We have more time to pray. Let me go into the word. Today I won't be too long. Uh, we're still in our month. This month we're learning about holiness. Holiness. Holiness unto the Lord. Holiness. You have to be holy as a Christian. You have to be holy as a believer. You have to be holy not just when you come to church, but in your daily life. Holiness has to be your portion. Holiness has to be everything that you strive on. Holiness is you. You have to be holy. So today, we're going to learn about your new outfits. You have a new outfit that God has prepared for you. Uh, and it's, it's called a holy garment. You see how that, 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 that man is swagged out and he's looking nice? We have a new outfit in the Lord. We have a new outfit in the Lord. So I want to remind you about holiness and a new outfit that you have. And that new outfit is called a holy garment. Hallelujah. So we're going to go into the Word today. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20. Um, and I want to tell you about the symbolic nature of garments. See, uh, the, the passage we're about to go into, when you hear the word put on, put off, the, the Greek meaning always symbolizes wearing something, wearing of clothes, wearing of clothes. So clothes are very symbolic. Clothing commun uh, communicates social status. Uh, it communicates um, your, your character. It communicates so many things. You can see somebody wearing something and already you can judge maybe what they do, where they come from, their lifestyle, whether they're rich or whether they're poor. As the picture I've seen here, you can see a soldier. You identify a soldier by what? By what they wear. That is their garment. So you, you, you identify by what they wear. You also identify royalty by what they wear. There's a garment. They're wearing a garment, so they're wearing a nice crown. And, 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 and when you see that, it's distinct from others. There's clothing for um, uh, when you see a man who's homeless. His clothing is different from the previous man. You, 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 the difference is the clothing and the, the, you, you're able to judge immediately whether this person is poor, whether this person is rich. So, so garments in the Bible and even in our day is very what? Symbolic. It's very symbolic. So you can tell this is the suit that I want to buy. And just, I'll, put, I'll put it up here. And when you see someone wearing a suit like this, you're like, wow, this person is nice, right? When you go into the interview, you don't go to the interview looking anyhow. You try and look your best. Why? Because it's very important. People judge by your appearance. Appearance is very important. It's unfortunate, but that's how it is. So you wouldn't dress how you go, to the, um, how you go out the same way as you go into an interview because you want to present yourself well. And you want the person interviewing you to, to see that you're serious, that, you, that, that your appearance, you keep yourself neat and tidy, and, and that you, you know, you're presentable. So it speaks volumes. Garments speak volumes. Amen? So, so we're going to learn today about your new garments. Your new garments. Your new outfits. Say your, my new outfits. God has made you a nice outfit. The best outfits in the world. So let's go to the word. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 20. And he said, But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off, Concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and 
holiness. Amen. Your new garment. So put on, put off. When you see those words, the, the, the biblical definition is um, the symbol of putting on clothes. But spiritually, it means something. So that's how we can uh, understand. So even in the Bible, uh, the children have been learned today um, in, in uh, Genesis chapter 3, 37, verse 3. The Bible says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peacefully what, to him. So Jacob what made Joseph a new garment, a special garment that identified and separated him from his brothers to show the love that Jacob had over his son, Joseph. And when his brothers saw that, the Bible said that they were envious, they were jealous because of the garment and what it what it symbolizes. And uh, in the Bible, Acts chapter 12, verse 21, the Bible says, so on the said day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat on his throne and gave an oration to them. So in those days, color was very important. Color was very important. The color purple represents power, wealth, and royalty. Purple represents power, wealth, and royalty. Proverbs, um, Proverbs 31 says, she makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and what? And purple. So color is very important. And in the biblical time, the color white is also very important, very symbolic. The color white represents purity and faithfulness and righteousness. Amen? Purity, faithfulness, and righteousness. Revelation 19, it said, And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Hallelujah. So clothing is symbolic. It's symbolic. And clothing is not only symbolic as a normal thing that you wear, but it also symbolizes someone's character in the Bible. It symbolizes someone's character. It's metaphorically used to convey something about the person's character or their state of mind. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that God is clothed. God is what? God is clothed. That doesn't mean that God has clothes like us that we wear. But it shows his character and his person. Amen. It shows his character. And the Bible says, this is, I want to tell you about God. The Bible says that the Lord, hallelujah, the, the Lord is, is, the Lord reigns. And he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed. He has gathered himself with strength. Hallelujah. So that means that God is not wearing a normal clothes. But that means that God's character, he is a majesty. God is majesty. God is sovereign. God is the king of kings. So the Bible says that God is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed. He has gathered himself with strength. Hallelujah. Uh, the Bible says, Dan chapter 7 verse 9. Dan chapter 7 verse 9. The, the Bible says, where is it going? The Bible says that 7 verse 9. I watched till thrones were put in place, and the ancient of days was seated. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like a pure wool, and his throne was a fiery flame. So Daniel had a vision that God, he was sitting on his throne, and he was wearing white. That means God is pure. That means God is righteous. That means God is all things. So God is clothed symbolically. Isaiah 59 verse 17 says, For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garment of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a... The Bible says God put on... Let's go back. Daniel said, I was till the thrones were put in place, and the ancients of days were seated. His garment was white as snow. So, so whenever you see garment, whenever you see clothing, it symbolizes a character and a state of mind. As I said, for God puts on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance. That is God's character. Hallelujah. So, so when God is ready to act on behalf of his children, but after that he's clothed with vengeance, that means he's going to defend and fight for his children. So God is clothed. 
And it symbolizes his character and his state of mind. Hallelujah. But so now I want to tell you, but the reason why I'm, where I'm leading to is that there's a garment that we are all wearing. God is wearing a garment. And his garment is righteousness. God's garment is pure. God's garment is, is holiness. God's garment is all things that is good. Amen. But some people are clothed in sin. Remember, clothing symbolizes character. It symbolizes your character and your state of mind. And some people, spiritually, they are clothed in sin. They are clothed in sin. And the Bible says in Matthew 23, verse 5, he says, this is, this, is, this is what God said, Jesus said, but all their works they do to be seen by men. They make their phylacteries broad and enlarge the borders of their garments. He's saying that Pharisees, they love to wear garments that is big, they like to wear garments that is white. They like to wear garments on the outside that looks good. But on the inside, they are spiritually clothed in sin. Hallelujah. They are clothed in sin because remember I told you, holiness is not hypocrisy. Holiness is not what you wear on the outside. Holiness is not what you look like on the outside. Holiness is what you do in secret. Holiness is what you do when nobody is watching. Holiness is how you treat your wife, how you treat your husband. Holiness is how you treat your son, your daughter. Holiness is how you treat people around you. That is true holiness. Hallelujah. And whenever you go away from God, the Bible says that it shows that you are clothed in sin. You are clothed in sin. So that the Pharisees were clothed in sin because they were hypocrites. And there are some people in the world that have given themselves to sin. There are people in the world that have given themselves to unrighteousness. They have given themselves to bad characters. They have given themselves to things that is not right as a believer to walk into. There are some people that are walking in greed. That is a character. And all their mind, all their heart is just greediness, greediness for gain, greediness for gain. There are people that are walking in wrath all the time. How I can fight someone and bring someone down. There are some people that are walking in gossips. That's a character. Always talking behind someone's back to try and bring them down. These are all characters. And whenever you are walking in those kind of characters, you are clothed in sin. In God's eyes, you are wearing bad clothes. Hallelujah. You are wearing bad clothes. And then some people... Some people, because of these things, they have no control over it. There's, some, there's a woman that I know, and her lifestyle is just, it's just always just, just men, 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 men. And your environment sometimes dictates your character. She grew up in an environment where it was normal to do that. And as a result of it, that's all she knows. And that's all she keeps doing. And she is clothed in sin, and she has no control over it because of her environment. Some people, they grow up, and they're always angry, and they're all fighting. Why? Because of the environment and how they were brought up in the home. And the things that they saw, their mom and dad, or their mom, or maybe their dad was not home, and it was always their mom. They saw all of these things, and then it dictates their character. So instead of wearing the nice outfits, their outfit has been destroyed on the inside because of the environment they grew up in. There's a man that, that struggles to commit in a relationship. They can't commit. Why? Because he grew up watching his mom be abused by all kinds of men. And so that, 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 that was what he saw. And that dictated his mind and his character. So it changed the way that he walks. Hallelujah. Because your environment dictates your character. So there are some people that have purposely given themselves to sin. Where they know what is good. They know what is right. But they still choose because of their pleasure. Because of what they want. They still choose to do what they want to do. And there are some people, they, they, they grew up in it and that's all they know. There's an analogy that if you put a frog um, in, in hot water straight away, it will just jump out. But if you put it in cold water, you turn the hot on, and it stays in there, it will get used to it until it dies. Why? You won't notice until it's too late. So that's the garments that people are wearing all over the world. All over the world. We are wearing garments, we are clothed in sin. And I want to give you another example. In Luke chapter 8, in Luke chapter 8, verse, in Luke chapter 8, verse 27. 
Says, then they sailed to the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite Galilee. And when he stepped out on the land, there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time, and he wore no clothes. Hallelujah. Nor did he live in a house but in tombs. When he saw Jesus, this man was tormented from the day he was born. Bible said he was demon possessed. That means that he's been struggling with all kinds of things. His mental, his character has all changed. And when it changes, you can't live in society anymore. You have to go and live where your mind dictates, which is the cemetery. And that's where he was living. And the Bible said he has no clothes, but spiritually he was clothed in darkness and sin. But when he saw Jesus, he cried. And he fell down before Jesus. And with a loud voice said, What am I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For he had often seized him. This is what the, the, the spirit did. It often seized him. It seized him. So that means it's not always, all, it doesn't come all the time, but often it will seize him and then doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to do and he has to run from society and go into the, the tomb, the cemetery. And he seized him and he was kept under guard and he was bound with chains and shackles. Because of the clothing that the enemy has put upon this man, it had bound him. Some of you, because of the clothing the enemy has put upon your character, it has bounded your life. It has bounded your marriage. It has put you in shackles. So whenever you get a job, you lose the job and you wonder why. Whenever you get money, you lose money and you wonder why. Whenever this is going well, then something just happens and it breaks it and you wonder why. It's because of the clothing that the enemy has put upon you. Hallelujah. The clothing that the enemy has put on your environment to bring you down to seize you, to keep you in shackles. But today is today. Hallelujah. Any clothing the enemy has put upon your life, any clothing the enemy has put in your character and in your mind, today God is about to make you a new garment. Hallelujah. You don't believe what I'm saying. God is about to make you a new garment and take away whatever the enemy has put upon you in the name of Jesus. A new garment. Say a new garment. He was bound with chains and shackles, and then he ran to Jesus. See, see he, he was running. The demon didn't want to run to Jesus, but see, there was a fight in, in, inside of him. I, I want to run, but the demon wants to keep me back, because if I run to Jesus, I know I'll be free from this bad character. I know I'll be free. So he was running, and the moment he ran, the demon shouted, Jesus, what are you going to do with us? Hallelujah. Because the enemy wanted to keep him bound. Sometimes you can't explain your character. You can't explain why you do things. Paul said, the good that I want to do, I don't do. But, but the bad that I don't want to do, that's what I keep doing. He can't explain it. That's because there's something spiritually going on. That is why. Some people live a certain lifestyle because of what is going on spiritually. And that's why as a believer, you have to pray and break it. Pray and break it. There are principles, there are things that follow us from our mother and father if we're not careful. There are things that follow us from our, fam from our family if we're not careful. There are things that will follow you if you're not careful. A man will grow up drinking because his parents, all, they were all drunkards. And they will follow him and he'll follow his children and he'll follow his children until you pray and break it. Because it's a garment that the enemy has put upon you. Amen. You have to pray and break it. And this is what Satan has done. So Paul said, and Paul wanted to remind the church that that was some of you in the past. That was all of you in the past. Before you knew Jesus, before you encountered Jesus, that was some of you. This I say, therefore, and I testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as what? As the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. So the Paul wanted to remind the church in Ephesus that that was you in the past. Where you had bad characters. Where you did things that you, you wanted to do. Where you lived in the flesh. When you were fornicating and doing things you should not be doing. That was you in the past. But not anymore. Why? 
because of Jesus. Something happened spiritually that changed things around in the spiritual realm. Something happened when our Lord Jesus Christ came upon the scene. Because people were walking in darkness. Hallelujah. People walk in darkness. The Bible says, and this is the condemnation. That light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Because the deeds were dark. People love darkness. They don't want to come into the light. As you know, most sins happen in the night. Now, darkness symbolizes sin. And people love it. And if you're not careful, you'll be stuck in your secret sins. You'll be stuck and nobody will know. But remember, God knows. And he sees. So Paul saying, that was some of you. You were in darkness and you were doing whatever your flesh wanted you to do. But the moment you come into Jesus, the moment you give your life to Christ, the moment you say you are a Christian, something has to change. The moment you give your life to Jesus, you are no more in darkness, but you are in light. You no longer have a bad character, but you have been clothed in something else. And that was some of you. Hallelujah. First John says that, but he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness, and he does not know where he is going. If you say you hate your brother, you, you walk in hatred as a Christian, God sees you as a person who's walking in darkness. Because God, the Bible says God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. Not just some, at all. So you cannot be a Christian and say, I hate my brother. You cannot be a Christian and say, I hate my sister. The Bible says you are walking in darkness and you don't even know where you are going. Amen. Amen. So that was some of you, Paul was saying. And people have given themselves over to uncleanness. And Paul saying that, look, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. He was describing the state of the world and the state of the character of the church before they became Christians. Before they became Christian. But then he said this, but not anymore. But not anymore. Say not anymore. That was my life before. Say that was my life before. But not anymore. So, but, no, but you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and you have been taught by him. As the truth is in what? In Jesus. There is something in Jesus. There is truth in Jesus. There is light in Jesus. There is new garment in Jesus. There is power in Jesus. There is breakthrough in Jesus. There is holiness in Jesus. There is power in Jesus. There is healing in Jesus. There is forgiveness in Jesus. Whatever you need is in Jesus. Hallelujah. So the moment you say you are a Christian, the moment you give your life to Jesus, something happens. Something happens. But you have not so learned Christ. He said, so that was your life before, but now you, you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have been taught by Christ, if you have encountered Christ, then there has to be something different about your life. If you have encountered Jesus, you have to stop the things that you are doing. If you have really encountered Jesus, you cannot afford to keep sinning. If you have really encountered Jesus and you have been taught by him, you cannot sin and be happy. If you have really experienced Jesus, you cannot love sin. If you have really experienced Jesus in your life and you say that you are a Christian, every time you sin, you have to cry. Every time you sin, you have to be ashamed. Every time you sin, you have to be broken because you have encountered something. So Paul is saying that was your life before. But if you have really encountered Jesus and you have really been taught by him, you cannot hate anymore. People, people will talk bad about you and you hear it. But you cannot live that past anymore. You cannot give yourself over to anger anymore. You cannot give yourself to lust anymore. It's hard. But God is commanding you that you can't do that anymore. And God is not expecting you to be perfect. Like I said to you, God is not expecting perfection. But he wants your mind and your heart to fight for holiness. To strive for holiness. 
Because you have what? Encountered Jesus. Because you have encountered Jesus. There are some people that really love God. There's a young man who, he was a young Christian. And he loves God. He loves God so much. And one day he was dating a friend. He was dating with the, uh, and then uh, something happened and he went and slept with this girl. And the next thing he did was he called his pastor. Pastor, I have sinned. Pastor, I have made a mistake. I have done something I should not have done. And he came crying to his pastor. The next day. But there are some Christians who are, are mature Christians. They will do it and they won't even feel anything. But this man was so convicted. That's the thing that God is looking for, conviction. If you have really encountered Jesus, for you to be convicted when you sin, when you're angry, when, when you are greedy, when you do, because that is our flesh. Our flesh wants something that is different to the spirit. All the time we are battling. And sometimes the flesh will win. But if you have encountered Jesus, you will not stay here anymore. You will always go back here. Even when the, the, the enemy pulls you here, you pull yourself back. Every time the enemy pulls you, you pull yourself back because I've encountered Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I've encountered Jesus. And that's what Paul was reminding them. That something happened. Jesus Christ came to do something. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ came to change the clothes that you are wearing. Jesus Christ came to change your character, to change your mind, to change your body. The, the Bible says, the cross says, Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And Satan was standing next to Joshua, opposing Joshua. That's what the enemy does. Every time the enemy wants to oppose you and stop you from being blessed, the enemy wants to keep you bound. The enemy wants to bring accusation against you. The enemy wants to take you away from Jesus. The enemy wants to hurt your life, hurt your destiny and bring you down, hallelujah and that's what is happening, but today I declare over your life, any satanic forces that has risen against you, may God destroy it in the name of Jesus, may God destroy it in the name of Jesus, any satanic forces that is fighting against your mind, fighting against your body, fighting against your children fighting against your marriage, may God destroy it today, in the name of Jesus Satan was standing and opposing Joshua. And this is what the Lord said to Satan. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Hallelujah. And that is why when you have Jesus, Jesus is always fighting for you. Hallelujah. He said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From when come my help? My help comes from the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord who keeps me. He neither sleeps nor slumber. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shield. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my holiness. The Lord is my power. The Lord is my everything. He is everything to me. He fought all my battles for me. Hallelujah. So when Satan was opposing Joshua, Joshua could not fight Satan. But the Lord was fighting on his behalf. And I pray may God fight on your behalf today. In the name of Jesus. May God fight on your behalf today. In the name of Jesus. Any satanic forces. May God fight on your behalf. In the name of Jesus. Can the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem, God has chosen you. You are now Jerusalem in spirit. The Lord, the Lord is rebuking Satan because God has chosen Joshua. So when God chooses you, he fights for you. And you know God has chosen you. There's a calling of God over your life. There's a call of God over your marriage. There's a call of God over your ministry. And God has chosen you. And because you are chosen, he will always fight for you. God doesn't fight for anybody. Else. It's only those that he has chosen. And the moment you give your life to Christ, you have been chosen by God. Hallelujah. And so, so then, when, when, when God said that, verse 3, now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. Joshua was wearing dirty garments. That means he was wearing things that represent sin, evil. And that was his life. Bible says that even our righteous deeds are filthy garments in your sight. So Joshua was wearing filthy garments, but this is what happened. And he was standing before the angel of the Lord. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you 
with what? With rich clothes. Hallelujah. See, God, something happened spiritually. Satan was opposing Joshua. And God rebuked Satan. And not only that, but Joshua was wearing filthy garments, which represents evil character and an evil mindset. And God said, take the filthy garments from Joshua. See, I have removed your iniquity. That's what's happened in your life. The moment you gave your life to Jesus, God removed your filthy garments. The moment you give your life to Jesus, God removed your dirty clothes. He removed your bad character. He removed your bad state of mind. He removed every sin that is in you. And he, not only that, but he gave you a new garment. He gave you a new garment. And that's what he said. See, I've removed your iniquity from you. And I've clothed you with what? With rich robes. Remember I said the purple represents royalty. God clothed you not just with any type of robes, but rich robes. That means God has given you a supernatural blessing that is different from the world. God has given, when God blesses you, he blesses you. In the, who can bless like God? God blessed Abraham so much that, he, that, that, that his, his field was just growing so much. God blessed Isaac so much. Wherever Isaac went, God blessed him. God blessed Jacob so much that people were running to Jacob. God blessed Joseph so much. Nobody blesses like God. And the moment you give your life to Jesus, he dresses you with new clothes. He gives you peace that the world cannot take away. There are some Christians, they go through some hardships, but they are so happy on the earth because God has given them rich robes. There are some Christians that go through a kind of thing, but they are still able to stand strong. It's not because they are strong, but it's because God has given them rich robes. That's what helps you to stand because you are wearing rich robes. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you and remind you that as a Christian, you are not wearing any ordinary clothes. You are wearing supernatural peace. You are wearing supernatural love. You are wearing supernatural joy. You are wearing supernatural holiness. You are wearing supernatural power. That is why nothing can come over you. Hallelujah. That touch not my anointing. Nobody can touch you because you are wearing a supernatural cloth. Say my new garments. That is your new garments. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of Satan. And he came to remove your sin. And he came because he loves you. And that's what Paul was reminding the church. That in him you have redemption through his blood. In Jesus you have redemption through the blood of Jesus. The forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. He said that, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Towards us who believe, there's a power that works in you when you believe in Jesus. You are walking in power. You are no longer a normal person. You are a person of power. Say power. power. Say power. power. The moment you give your life to Jesus, you are walking in power. So nothing should be able to stand in front of you because you are wearing rich garments. Hallelujah. So Paul was reminding them and reminding them and reminding them. God was reminding them. And, and then he said, um, and this is what I said, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. I will rejoice in my God. Because God has given me a new clothes. He has given me a new garment. And it's a garment of salvation. Hallelujah. May God clothe you in your life in the name of Jesus. May God clothe you with rich clothes in the name of Jesus. May the power of the Lord come upon you in the name of Jesus. So that is who you are as a Christian. So now, Paul was writing to the church and he said, see, this is what's happened to you spiritually. There's dirty clothes that you were wearing before. And there's a new garment that God has made for you. So now, as a believer... You have to put off. That means you have to take away the filthy garments. Put away, put off concerning your former conduct. The old man. That means when you become a Christian, the Bible says when you come in Christ, you are a new creature. A creature. The old has passed. Behold, the new has come. So when you become a Christian, you are new. And you have to stop the old things. Say, stop the old things. Tell your enemy, stop the old things. If I'm someone that used to do all kinds of things, I have to stop it when I become a Christian. Because I am wearing new garments. I cannot go. It's like a homeless man who's wearing dirty clothes. And then he comes into a rich house and he's wearing a suit. You can't go back to wearing the homeless clothes. 
Because God has given you a new garment. So Paul was saying to the church, put off the old things. Stop it. Stop doing those things. It will not help you. We all sin in our life. Where did it get us? I love my mother-in-law, my Paulina. She's so open and she's someone that's very honest. She tells me about her life. Like, Alan, I did so many men. All of them were foolish. <laughs> Said all these men, they are bad. She's not ashamed of it because she said, yes, that's my experience. I did, she said, I did everything. I enjoyed life. But none of it was helpful to me. None of it was a blessing to me. So why do I want to keep wearing my old clothes? When God has changed me supernaturally and given me a new garment. Hallelujah. Why do I want to keep fighting with my wife, fighting with my husband? That will not help me. But when I become a Christian, God has given me a new garment, a garment of peace. So now I live at peace in my household. If you come to my house, we are fighting for peace all the time. Hallelujah. Remember my sister was telling me, Alan, don't let the sun come down on your anger. Because sometimes marriage is not easy. You're angry, fighting. You want to, you, want to uh, you know? But that's the old me. So I put on a new garment. And even though I'm not perfect, I have to work. Make sure I'm walking in that new garment. Because the old things will not help me. Amen. Say a new garment. Say a new garment. God has made you a new garment. So now this is what he has to say. Put off these things. Therefore, put away lying. If you're someone who lies, you have to stop. Stop lying to people. Stop lying. Don't let life be your lifestyle. Hallelujah. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. If you're someone who struggles with that, don't be angry. And even if you're angry, don't let the sun go down. It's very spiritual. Because the moment the sun, if you let your anger carry on, the enemy will take advantage of your anger and use it to say something you regret. There's a woman that got angry and kicked her husband out. Up to now, she's begging for that husband to come back. He won't come back. Just that split second of giving in to it, she has lost her marriage. Hallelujah. So he said, what? Don't let, I, don't, let, don't let the sun go. So when you are angry, just always remember and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. Say, God, you have given me a new garment. Anger is not my portion anymore. I remove it in Jesus' name. You pray. If you steal, don't steal anymore. Let no corrupt word come out of your mouth. There are so many Christians that like cussing. As a Christian, you should never cuss. You shouldn't say bad words. Bad words should not come from your mouth. Like the other people, the worldly people say. Because you are wearing a new garment. So your speaking has to be different. You don't speak like the world. You speak like Christ. Hallelujah. So let no corrupt words come from your mouth. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Sometimes when you sin, the Holy Spirit is grieving inside of you. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't like the way that you are living. And always he's grieved and he's grieving. When the Holy Spirit is grieved, you don't see his power in your life. So the Bible says do not grieve the Holy Spirit. When you don't come to church, the Holy Spirit is grieved. Because the Holy Spirit wants to be in a presence where he can show his glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Let all bitterness, there's some people that are very bitter, bitter about what the things that thing the people have done to you in the past. Let it go. Don't be bitter anymore. He said, he said, let all bitterness, all wrath, anger, and evil speaking put away from you. He said, but fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness. Covetousness means you, you see what somebody else has and you want it so much. No, God is doing something for you in your life. Just wait patiently. Our brother was saying to me, I wanted to live stream. And I said, oh, I'm waiting for equipment. Because why are you waiting for big equipment? People are waiting for big things. They see a millionaire, they want to be straight away. But just start small. And you see how it goes. Focus on your own thing. Hallelujah. Focus. On, don't see what wait, people, people are being blessed. That's their time. Everybody has their time. So just be happy for them. And trust that your time is also coming. Say new garments. Say God is working something for you. So he said, let, it, let, it, let all of those things go. Covetousness. He said, but fornication and uncleanness. See, see, see some Christians, I'm being asked to speak at a, 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 a women's conf- uh, conference next week. And a woman telling me that in the church, the women, they have sugar daddy, sugar this, sugar that, all kinds of things. You're laughing, but it's, you know, that's the reality now in Christians. You know? So he said, but he said, that's your old garment. Why do you want to do those things? It will not help you. Sugar daddy will not help you. 
Hallelujah. They won't help you. Sugar mummies will not help you. I'm not speaking to somebody. Hallelujah. Say, but all fornication, if someone comes to your life, they want to start, they want to date. Say that I'm wearing a new garment. So if you want to, if you want to enter my, my private, you have to marry. Go home. So that, tell my, 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 my uh, let me introduce you to my parents. Take the right, show me that you love me by putting a ring on it. Hallelujah. Because I am what? Wearing a new garment. So I don't want to, to dirty my garment. Because God has clothed me with rich robes. So Paul was saying that all these old things, let it go. Let it not, I said, let it not even be named among you. Don't even, let, don't even give someone room to even say that to you or suspect it. Because what? Because let it be named among you. As is fitting for saints. You are a saint in Jesus. The moment you become a Christian, you are a saint. Neither filthiness, foolish talking, just in which are not fitting, everything, let it go. So Paul was saying to the church, because you are wearing a new garment, put off the old things and wear the rich things that God has given unto you. Hallelujah. So put off all of these things. And he said what? And that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness. Say righteousness. righteousness. And holiness. Say holiness. So my new garment, every day when I wake up, I am wearing holiness. Every day when I go to work, I am wearing holiness. Every day when I go into my house, I am wearing holiness. Because that is your new garment in the Lord. And God has clothed you with rich, rich robes. Hallelujah. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God strengthen you. May God help you. May the power of the Lord work in you to live a holy life in the name of Jesus. And may God clothe you with righteousness. Hallelujah. So every day when you wake up, just remember that you are wearing new clothes. And sometimes it will be dirty. But that's why the blood of Jesus is there. And they will wash your clothes and they will keep it white all the time. As long as you are fighting for holiness. And if you do that, God will bless you in so many ways. And you will break through this year. Hallelujah. There's so many blessings in this room. There's so many potentials in this room. There's so much that God wants to use you to access this year. But you will only do that when you fight for holiness. Amen. So let holiness be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us be on our feet and let's pray.